Good evening. I am an advocate for science, technology, engineering, and math careers. In particular, I am passionate about women and Latinas building and growing STEM companies. Why STEM? Because to me, STEM is everywhere. It is in everything that we do. The US Bureau of Labor and Statistics states that there are 2.6 million job openings now and between now and 2024. And that figure is going to continue to grow by 13% until 2026. Now, I looked at that number and I thought to myself, all right, the US population is 51% women. 20% of those women are Latinas. We're going to be dominating STEM fields, right? No. <laughs> no. Women in STEM have gone down. The number of women in STEM has gone down since the 90s. Currently, 25% of the STEM workforce are women. And of those women, Latinas make up 1.9%. No wonder. No wonder I felt alone. To give you an idea, let me take you through my STEM journey. I was raised by a father who immigrated from Chile and a mother who was born and raised in Puerto Rico. It was a Spanish-speaking, multicultural household. They raised my younger brother and me in Union City, New Jersey. It is the second most densely populated city in the US. I attended public school from kindergarten all the way through 12th grade, and through hard work, dedication, and a community of support, I beat the odds and was accepted to MIT. I graduated with a degree in civil engineering and I went on to work in construction management. I worked on projects in Boston, New York City, and then I came back to my hometown of Union City to work on some projects there. The project that I am most proud of was in Union City, and it is the Union City High School project. 375,000 square feet. It took $176 million to build it. And did I mention that Union City is the second most densely populated city in the US? There's no space to build. So we put a roof, a, a stadium on top of the roof. Pretty cool, right? It's won numerous awards. Sports Illustrated even named it one of the top 10 high school football fields in the nation. My story is not unique. There are many other women who have accomplished just as much or even more than I have. But we feel alone we feel like we're the only ones. As the project manager for that project, I was the only female manager in my company. And I felt it. I felt it every single day. I had to prove myself every single day. I was given reason to quit every single day but I stuck it out. I built another building, and then I went on to start my own company and a nonprofit. 
I believe there are many more young women out there that have the math and science ability to succeed, but do not have the blueprint on how to get there. So what is the blueprint? Funny you should ask, I actually have it. And it starts with a strong foundation, just like any other building. And that foundation comes from within, the individual. Every single person has to have two things. You have to be able to stay on your daily. It is a term that my business partner and I coined. And that means that you make sure you prepare every single day so that you are never cold. You're never cold and you're always on point. The second thing is mental toughness. Now this is a tough one because many people are afflicted with self-doubt or that imposter syndrome. And what I've found is that, especially women, all the women I've spoken to across the country that are in STEM fields have self-doubt. Remember that graduation picture I showed you? Where I'm holding, look at what I'm doing and look at what my family's doing. I am looking at my degree for the 20th time that day to check if that in fact is my name on the degree. I had zero reason to doubt that was my degree. I did everything right. I met all the requirements. I was ready to graduate. And yet that day, I couldn't believe it. I still couldn't believe it. Now, I didn't let that doubt hold me back. I got through that. That self-doubt does creep up every once in a while, but I keep it at bay. And I do that by staying on my daily and being tough because I wouldn't have managed that project if I allow that self-doubt get the best of me. So I say to you, to have a strong foundation, believe in yourself and stay on your daily. The next part of the blueprint, and this is for many people, but it is true for Latinos, family and friends. Family and friends sometimes come first for us, but I'm telling you today that they can't. They have to be second, first is you. And to the family and friends that are here, if a loved one is pursuing a STEM career, support them. And support the vision that they have for themselves. Not the vision that you have for them, the vision that they have for themselves. Don't know how to support them? Ask. It might just be listening. Maybe that's all they need. Maybe it's just you just understanding what it is that they need to do. Next is at the educational level. I encourage everyone who's an educator to teach a growth mindset. What's a growth mindset? It's staying on your daily. It is teaching students that through hard work and dedication, they can achieve their goals. Mentorship. Be a mentor. If you are in a STEM field, if you are in college and studying a STEM field, mentor a younger student. If you're a professor, mentor a student. If you're a professional, mentor another professional. And I encourage you to mentor a woman. All of my mentors have been men. And the mentor that gave me the best advice was that first mentor I had when I started my career. He gave me the best piece of le leadership advice I've ever received, which is teach someone else 
everything you know. Teach them everything you know and allow them to help you to grow. He also taught me to never be cold, to always prepare. The man was teaching me to stay on my daily before the, the phrase was even invented. Colleagues, one of the issues that women have and one of the main reasons women leave the field of STEM are the challenges they face at work from harassment, sexism, racism. And what I have, the solution to all of those issues is respect. We got to respect our colleagues. Women are your colleagues. You're working together. You're collaborating together. You should all be working towards the same mission. Therefore, all you need to do is respect. It's very simple. Finally, leaders. If you're a leader, a leader of an organization, a leader of a company, corporation, your own business, and you say that you are all for diversity and inclusion, and you do not have a single woman by your side that you listen to whose advice you take, then you are not about diversity and inclusion. To be a supporter of diversity and inclusion means you need to listen to women. You need to listen and implement their ideas. Don't just bring on board a woman and not listen to her. Don't just do the PR thing and show off, hey, look, my board has all these women. Look at them. Isn't this great? I'm all about diversity and inclusion. And you don't listen to a single one of their ideas. Listen to their ideas. Implement them. Take the risk. That's why you got into business. So my call to action to all of you here tonight is to find yourself in the blueprint and do your part to help us grow the number of women and Latinas in STEM fields. Thank you.